So once again, I'm talking about my favorite newest member of Congress. No, we're not talking about Cory Bush or Jamal Bowman. Of course, we're talking about friend of the show, Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene, who, uh, if, of course, is one of two conspiracy theorists uh, from the QAnon movement that were elected to Congress. My uh, faith in the American people is at an all-time low. Nonetheless, <laughs> she's elected to Congress, and we continue to learn more and more about her, and... It's like whenever we think that she can't possibly get any crazier or more unhinged, new details emerge that prove, no, actually, she can. So CNN reports Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene repeatedly indicated support for executing prominent Democratic politicians in 2018 and 2019 before being elected to Congress, a CNN K-File review of hundreds of posts and comments from Greene's Facebook page shows. Green, who represents Georgia's 14th Congressional District, frequently posted far-right extremist and debunked conspiracy theories on her page, including the baseless QAnon conspiracy which casts former President Donald Trump in an imagined battle against the sinister cabal of Democrats and celebrities who abuse children. In one post from January of 2019, Green liked a comment that said a bullet to the head would be quicker to remove House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In other posts, Green liked comments about executing FBI agents who, in her eyes, were part of the deep state, working against Trump. In one Facebook post from April of 2019, Green wrote conspiratorially about the Iran deal, one of former President Barack Obama's signature foreign policy achievements. A commenter asked Green, now do we get to hang them, meaning H and O, referring to Hillary Clinton and Obama. Green replied, stage is being set. Players are being put in place. We must be patient. This must be done perfectly or liberal judges would let them off. So this is now an elected member of Congress who once discussed and liked posts on Facebook about killing individuals who are now her colleagues. And that might not be the most extreme thing about her. Because, of course, you know, she's violent. Uh, she supports violence. But she also supports the most bizarre conspiracy theory about Hillary Clinton that for some reason, like, I'm just learning about now. I knew about all of the Pizzagate stuff and the conspiracy theory about Seth Rich that she supposedly killed him or uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz killed him, whatever. This conspiracy theory that she believes is um, next level crazy. So she believes that Hillary Clinton, uh, there's a video of her where she murders, mutilates, and then drinks the blood of a child in a satanic ritual. Marjorie, Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene supported Clinton child murder conspiracy theory before running for Congress. <laughs> Marjorie, are we okay? This is like, there's, there's no words to describe the level of delusion here. But um, that's not all. She also believed that um, Sandy Hook was staged, and she believed unironically that Bush did 9-11. On top of that, she believed that Parkland was a false flag, that shooting never happened. And to make matters worse, um, in January of 2020, she literally, on her own volition, decided to upload this video where she harasses Parkland survivor David Hogg. David, why are you supporting the red flag laws? If there had been, if Scott Peterson, the resource officer at Parkland, had done his job, then Nicholas Cruz wouldn't have killed anybody in your high school, or at least protected them. Why are you supporting red flag gun laws that attack our Second Amendment rights? And why are you using kids to get to, as a barrier? Do you not know how to defend your stance? Look, I'm an American citizen. I'm a gun owner. I have a concealed carry permit. I carry a gun with, for protection for myself, and you are using your lobby and the money behind it and the kids to try to take away my Second Amendment rights. You don't have anything to say for yourself? You can't defend your stance? How did you get over 30 appointments with senators? How'd you do that? How did you get major press coverage on this issue? And how did you get kids? Why do you use kids? Why kids? You know, if school if school zones were protected by with security guards with guns, there would be no mass shootings at school. Do you know that? The best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. But yet you're attacking our Second Amendment. And you have nothing to say. No words. So I'm walking.
pocket. He's got nothing to say. Sad. He has nothing to say because there really isn't anything to say, you guys. He has nothing to say because he's paid to do this. He has the walkaway march. Mm -hmm. He's got the um, he's got the women's march, and they're funding all of this. Every Town Gun USA, they're funding all this stuff. Okay, that was David Hogue right there. David, we saw him inside the Senate building. He had 30, 30 um, appointments where he ran around and got to talk to senators. I got to talk to none, none. He had media coverage all over the place. I had zero. Guess what? I'm a gun owner. I'm an American citizen, and I have nothing. But this guy with his George Soros funding and his major liberal funding has got everything. Again, she chose to upload this on her own accord. She thought this was a good idea to put this out into the universe. Harassing a survivor of a mass shooting. Someone who has no power in this situation. He's an activist who decided to take action after he almost got killed. So uh, rather than actually like putting pressure on politicians... She literally is harassing a victim. You can disagree with his politics as a gun rights extremist, again, gun anarchist, if you will, whatever the fuck she believes, but like to harass him, don't you think that's a little fucking weird? Uh, but it gets worse because a video emerged of her attempting to confront Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, um, and I don't necessarily know if she ever got to confront them, but in this video, she explains why she was so outraged at something that Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib did, and this has nothing to do with policy. It's one of the dumbest reasons imaginable, but nonetheless, she thought it was a good idea to um, take up this issue. They signed it. They swore in on the Korean. Oh, we have the Bible. We're going to talk about swearing in on the oath, how to swear in on the Bible with them and let them know what our law says, yes. that you can't swear in on the Koran. So we're going we're gonna to explain that. You know, we're going to explain about how you can't swear in on the Koran, and we're yeah. going to have the Bible and ask them if they would swear in on the Bible, mm -hmm. that we really need we them. We have the oath. Yeah, we have the oath, yep. So I think no, that's important. The sad thing is, now you're, they are infringing on our religion. Which they, you you're, should you're, not you're infringing on our religion yes. by saying that we can't swear in on the Koran. But when they swore in, it wasn't a law yet, right? At the time they swore in. I don't know. I think at the time they swore in, that wasn't passed. Because it wouldn't have been passed in a Republican control. Right. Yeah, so it was passed after they swore in. So they're not really official, I don't think. So let's go ask them to swear in in the Bible. Because like you is said, Will, I'm... It has to be the Holy Bible? I, yeah, it has to be the Bible. Well, the bottom line is Sharia yeah. law, yeah. law, is, yeah. law is not compatible with, with America. Yep. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. How can you say you represent women, but you support Sharia law? I have no idea what law she's referring to, but she's wrong. And I can prove that by just reading from the Constitution. Uh, Members of Congress shall be bound by oath or, or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Article 6. So, it's not required that a Muslim member of Congress be sworn in on the Bible. I think that most people should be sworn in on constitutions, not Bibles. But at the end of the day, none of this matters. What I care about ultimately are the policies. But this dipshit, who is completely unhinged, is so outraged that they swore in on the religious text that they believe in, that she wanted to literally confront them about it. I mean, it doesn't get any more insane than that. And I mean, just the mere fact that she was a member of QAnon, even though she's tried to like distance herself from this movement, um, you don't get to just like pretend as if that didn't happen. You don't get to pretend as if you haven't promoted like literally every single dumb fucking conspiracy theory imaginable. I mean, she makes Alex Jones look sane because even Alex Jones, who believes in literal fish people, even he sees through QAnon and thinks that maybe that's a little bit too extreme. Maybe the QAnon people are a bit misguided. So like she's giving Alex Jones a run for his money. I'll eat my neighbors. I just, I don't know what to say. This is a member of Congress, and it would be bad enough if she was the only QAnon supporter to get elected. But we also saw Laura, Laura Boebert, another QAnon conspiracy theorist, get elected to Congress. And that's on top of the other dipshits who already exist in Congress. Louis Gohmert, Ted Cruz. I mean, these folks 
are absolutely stupid. I can't forget about Jim Inhofe. It's just, these are the individuals who are writing legislation and voting on laws that affect all of our lives. And I don't even know that they're capable of like taking care of themselves. Like to be that stupid, like you have to literally be eating paint chips every single day. Like you must almost die pretty frequently because you just like randomly forget to breathe. How many times have you tied your shoelaces together and tripped and then blamed someone else for it? Like this, it's batshit fucking insane. Like there's nothing really to, to say that like puts this into perspective. Like this is truly bizarre. We are living in weird times and um, I don't know what else to say about this. We have an absolute crazy person who is a member of Congress and um, it's bad. <laughs> This is, not, this is not good. Like, this person should not be in Congress. I would be really uncomfortable if this person had any amount of power. If this person was, like, a night manager at some fast food restaurant. That would be too much responsibility for her. But the fact that she is a representative in Congress with constituents, that is downright disturbing and horrifying. Thank <laughs> you.